All right. Hey, that is appropriate music for my next guest uh, on the program tonight. He was the inspiration for the character Fonzie on the program Happy Days, and he has a new book out. Let's, uh, this should be him now. Let's welcome to the program Roland Gorchnik. FMU, you're on the air. You got the Gorch. Hey, well, thanks for, for coming on the program. Uh, you got it. I appreciate it. And, um, yeah, buy my book. So what, tell, that is, what is the book called, first of all? It's called The Real Life Fonzie's Guide to Real Life. Okay, and it's, um, so the, the character Fonzie from the... from the buy it? I, I will buy it, yes. I didn't get a chance to uh, check it out yet. I just got some, some notes from your publisher on it. But. Yeah. So the book is kind of exciting, I guess. It's, it's, it's telling what, your life story? Well, it's pretty much that. It, it gets into that, but it's also sort of an advice guide for specifically young kids. Okay. Uh, so, so it's an advice book. Well, it, t- it tells my story of growing up, uh, you know, in the 50s in York, PA. That's where I grew up. As a matter of fact, that's where uh, a young Gary Marshall uh, came into contact with me. This must have been like '56. Okay, so you that so he met you way back. Back when, when he was, you know, he's from I think Brooklyn, and he was down visiting his aunt or something, and uh, he hung out there for I think the summer, and by that point I was pretty legendary d- uh, uh, down there. Well, I, was, so, I was the first guy in York not to wear a helmet when he rode his bike. You were like Fonzie then for well, these. No, Fonzie's like me, but. If I could be critical, I'd, I'd say that Fonzie's pretty watered down compared to what it was really like. Oh, you mean in terms of what the fi- what the fifties were like, or what you were like? Well, you know, he's essentially based on on me. Uh huh. And you know, things were sort of like they are on the show, but like in terms of Fonzie, like the way he's dressed, mm-hmm. like the jeans, that's true. The boots, true. Uh, white t-shirt, leather jacket, true. I wore a neckerchief, though. So d- just maybe you can give us some insight into the into how Gary Marshall met you and. Well, it's like I said, you know, he was he was visiting his auntie, and you know, but like I said, by that point I was pretty legendary, and I was just being being the gorge, basically, you know, like. Uh, a lot of things you see on the show. I would go into the malt shop, this place called Henry's. I'd go in there and I'd, I'd pound on a, on, a uh, on the jukebox, and it would play. And also, when I would come in, people would applaud like they do for Fonzie. They would applaud. You mean applaud you? They'd go, "Here comes the Gorch," and I'd go, "How's about it?" Which they took and turned into hay, which I think is really lame. You know what also stinks about that show? What's that? You never saw Fonzie steal from no one. What? What? But Fonzie wasn't like a, a crook. Yeah, but the Gorch, he, he stole when he had to. I, I, yeah, but I guess it, it, I guess that's part of what television. We had a clubhouse. My, my group and I were called the. The Almighty Deacons. We had a clubhouse. Everything in it we stole from other stores. Back then, that that wasn't a big deal. What stealing wasn't a big deal? Yeah. I, you know, I I guess I'm under under. Uh, I was always under the impression that stealing was kind of always a big deal. Not in York in the fifties. That was paradise, baby. So now tell us about the the uh, we were talking about. The book is is advice. Yeah. Like what kind what kind of advice? Well, you know, for kids, you know, for young people, because there wasn't anyone as cool as the Gorch when I was a kid. Okay. So you know, I could have used some uh, some guidance. So you are planning on maybe giving some guidance to uh, today's well, youth. Well, shoot, shoot me a problem. That a, that a kid of today might face. I don't know. I'm a kid who's having 
a lot of trouble with uh, with uh, class in school, like like science class. You know what you need to do, kid. First of all, be cool. Secondly, you gotta drink a malted. But how does that help with? See, I understand how being cool is important in certain certain aspects in certain places. Right. But it, it, I guess it kind of also has a. There is a time and a place where being cool isn't necessarily all that it takes. It just it it doesn't answer only, every yeah, problem. Only a dipstick would say something like that. Mm-hmm. Sound like a turkey. I'm. Well, look, anyone, just, anyone knows that they just need to be cool. Uh-huh. And one thing that's not cool, asking questions. Asking questions is not cool. Yeah. Uh-huh. You don't see the gorge asking no questions. Mm-hmm. Hey, I should say that our guest is uh, Roland Gorchnik, who is the author of a book called The Real Life Fonzie's Guide to Real Life, and the character Fonzie from the program Happy Days was... I guess loosely modeled on on Roland. Sorry, well, you know, I think more than loosely, and you know what, man? What's that? I tried to sue that jerk for 30 mil. So then you know what he does? What's that? He brings me out there to be a consultant. And how long were you out there for? About four days. So so you were out there? They sent me back. You know why? Why? Because I tried to make it gritty. I said, you want... You tried to make it what? You put a, a pipe or a chain in Fonzie's hand. You have him whip it around. You hit that mouth guy right in the throat. So, so they didn't go along with that, obviously. See, because they were giving me some uh, bull-ass hit about uh, uh, censors. And violence, probably. Well, I also told them, you know what you got to do? you got to have Fonzie shack up with Laverne. It seemed like there was some unsettled business between the two of them, and I thought he should have he should have just gone over to that brewery and well, you know, uh-huh. We actually have a question here on the email. Um, can your guest really fix things like jukeboxes by pounding them? Well, let me tell you, sometimes I fix them, sometimes I make them worse. And you know, here's an example of that. I went to Henry's malt shop. This guy was over there, he was playing the song I didn't like on the jukebox. He was playing Donna by Richie Valens. Uh-huh. I go up there, I grab his head, I shove it through the glass, it goes right through, I, I grab Rock Around the Clock by the great Bill Haley, I put it on the thing, and I play it with his teeth. So, so that's, that's kind of how you dealt with, with people and, and things. Yeah. Okay. Still, still do. So that you still do? Yeah, if you were here, I'd shove your face through a jukebox. Really? Yeah. You're a 63? I'd wrap a chain around that little turkey neck. Let, let's, well, let's, let's stop all this. Let's get back to your book. What is some of the general advice you give in the book? Well, like if you've got a girl problem, you know, one thing I've learned over the years, girls love to get yelled at. Makes them feel special. They love to get yelled at? Scream at them. See, I would really disagree with that. I mean, that... Say you're, at, say you're at a department store. Uh-huh. You know, you're checking out undershirts. She's across the aisle. She's looking at perfume, and she's going, Gorge, buy me some perfume. I go, you get over here. She feels special because you're talking to her. Well, why wouldn't you just talk to her in, in general without yelling at because her? Because they don't respond to that. Another thing girls like... They... You talk trash to them. Like what? Girls love to know that you know where it goes. I, I would kind of put that on the side of a way not to talk to a girl. You're not the gorsh. Yeah, I guess I'm not the gorsh. I'm, I'm 63 years cool, and I'm still doing it. You're still doing So you, are, you consider every, yourself... Every other night. You're doing what? It. <laughs> oh, God. I'm, ma- I'm making out every night. With, are you married? No way. I live with my uh, my nephew. Uh-huh. And his daughter. That's enough. Your nephew. And yeah. your, and how do they... Uh, well, how do you like looking at younger people like that? How, it's, how does... It's, well, uh, hang on. Here comes, here comes my... Uh, his, his daughter right now. Sheila, you 
You get away from here. Yeah, you you take it out there. Oh my God. What'd you say? I said, what is it like? What what things do you notice from the younger generation that that uh, maybe things that you enjoy? Well, I like Sheila when she's doing my laundry, when she's folding my undershirts and my jeans. So, but are there any things like in like movies or music? Look, or? I, I haven't. The last good movie made was The Outsiders. But that was the last good movie. How about music? Like, is is there any music these days that kind of uh, you, you interests gotta you? You got to be kidding me! That that garbage. That's garbage, man. Give me Richie Valens any day. Except mm-hmm. Donna. La Bamba, yeah. Come on, let's go. That's priceless stuff. Okay. Um, you know what else I hate about today? What? You can't cruise nowhere. And no, how? One, no one drives convertibles no more. Uh huh. I, well, I guess they don't make a whole lot of them. Uh... I, I was driving down the road the other day in my convertible. Some kid throws a dead frog at me. Okay, and what? Why? Because he he said I was an old timer. He had those baggy jeans on. You know what I did? What did you do? Guess what I did? Um, I have no idea. I beat him with a chain. Well, how old was this kid? Fourteen. So you, you mean to say you got you got you as a, a man in your sixties? I got a whole I got a whole rack of baseball caps in my room. From kids I beat with chains. Uh huh. Well, that's that's really um, that's really something not to be proud of. Well, that's another thing you know about today. What? These gangs. You hear about these drive-bys? Uh huh. We used to do drive-bys back in the fifties. Yeah. You know what you do? What? You get one guy driving the T-Bird. The old coach would hang out the passenger side. I got this extra long chain. I'm whipping it around. First, I take off a bunch of mailboxes. Take off some kids' hats. Then we had this rivalry with this this uh, other town called Abbotsville. Okay. They had a deacons over there, too. We'd drive into Abbotsville. I'd start whipping that chain around. I'd take those deacons out one by one. <laughs> That's horrible, though. We loved it, though. They loved it, too. They... they, they... It was one big brotherhood. <laughs> How is that possible that it would be one big brotherhood, people you're hitting with... With a chain. We, look, we had our own code back then. Uh-huh. If you, if you had a disagreement, you settled it in the vacant lot behind old man's show records. Yeah, and if, if you wanted something, you took it. Okay. Things are so touchy-feely now. All right, you want to take a call? Let's do it. WFMU, you're on the air. Uh, you said you didn't like any of the popular music. No. Well, oh. I mean popular. Popular music for me is still Bill Haley, Penguins, the Olympics. Yeah, well, the classics. That's about, classic uh, rock. I, I remember there was a big music video uh, by Weezer a little while ago, and it had um, it had you in it doing some funky dancing. But... That wasn't me. I, oh, yeah, I mean, I... I mean, Fonzie. I'm sorry. I n- I ain't never seen that video. Well, do you have a question for our guest? Like, I, I uh, wanted like... to know what he thought about the the portrayal, the modern portrayal. But uh... well, well, like I said, you know, the show was weak, and. Uh... Episode number uh, number two. Uh, that's when Richie and Patsy they team up and they buy this this convertible. Well, you know, in real life, the, the episode, the incident that's based on, is when I sold the two guys that that uh, Richie and Patsy were based on. These two guys from York. One's named Rodney. One's named Earl. I sold those guys a car with no engine. They got mad at me. You know what I did to them? I made them fight each other with chains. You made them fight yeah. each other? Well, I watched and laughed. So that's how much of a tough guy you were. Hey, sometimes you gotta you gotta rule with your mind. All right. Well, thanks for yeah, calling. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. No, it would be great if they made videos for those old groups like the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Remember that song, Western Movies? Oh, mm-hmm. that's good. Hey, you know what? What's that? I made a record back then. You actually made a record? Yep. What, what was the record called? It was called Chain Fight Tonight. And what was the name of the uh, chain? Uh, what was the name of the group, first of all? Was this a hit? Well, it was a big hit. It was like top uh, top 12 in York and in uh, South Central PA. <laughs> so it was top 12 in York? Yeah. So I can, uh, let me, did it go any, did it go past number 12? It was 11. Uh-huh. 
It was a, t- it was a tough time because there were so many great songs on the charts back then. So the record was called Chain Fight Tonight. We're going to have a chain fight tonight. Everything's going to be all right. You got the gorge by your side. I promise you my chain. I'm going to do it right tonight. WFMU, you're on the air. Ever run into an Amish street gang? Don't mess with them, man. It's true. There was one back then. Uh, they would come down from Kutztown. Oh, man, they were tough. Yeah, from Lancaster County. I know. I That's know. right. All right, listen, you take care. Great. Well, thanks for calling. You buy that right. book, or I'm going to come after you with a chain. 201-200-9368 is the number. My guest is Roland Gorchnik, who uh, the character Fonzie on God, the... That brings back memories. That, bit, that group was called the, uh, the Bone Builders. They were tough. Oh, what the uh, then? They never heard radio, so they didn't know rock and roll like no, you did. But you know they they would use those horse whips. Oh man, they stung, but they were no match for our pipes and chains. WFMU, you're on the air with uh, the Gorch. Hi, I have uh, two quick questions for your um, for Mr. Gorch. Let's hear them. Okay, one is: there, was there ever anyone really based on um, Pinky Tuscadero? Did you date anyone like that? There was a girl who, uh, she wrote a chopper. It was a pink chopper. Her name was Paula. Paula. Yeah. Guess what I did? What? Balder. All right, and I have, I have a second question. Um, were you ever abducted by aliens? Because if you remember, on Happy Days, yeah. Mork for Mork came down once and, you know, walked around, and he, he was from outer space. No, but as a matter of fact, people thought I, the goose was from outer space because I was so... So cool and so above everybody else. They thought I was from Planet Cool. Oh, okay. Planet Cool. You got it. All, All right. right. Well, great. Hey. Thanks for calling. Right. Do, do you remember that episode where Fonzie uh, goes back to high school? Uh huh. Well, that's that is based on something I did in '57. I was already long out of school. Okay. I came back to York High, not because I wanted to get my diploma. Why? There was this dame there who I desperately wanted to ball. So you went back to high school just for that? Yeah, guess what I did? What's that? I balled her. Boy, that, that's, a, that's a real shocker. So, you know, you're really making uh, the 50s sound a lot dirtier than, than I guess I ever thought it was. Well, you got that watered-down version that Marshall and his stooges give you. It was a lot more fun than that, you know? Mm-hmm. Everyone was beating each other up with chains. It was great. Mm-hmm. So how do, chains were what everybody fought with? Chains, pipe. Pipe? Yeah. You cut off a, thing, a section of copper pipe, you go at it. You know, it's funny. One time, they tried to get me in the army. First of all, I, look, I say, look, the gorge ain't serving nobody. I say, you point me in the direction of the nearest general. Uh-huh. They take me to some guy who's got all those badges on. Yeah. I say, look, I ain't joining nothing. He gives me some some junk. You know what he gets? What What's that? He sucks on my pipe. He what? He sucked on my pipe. I don't know. What, what do you mean by that? What do you think it means? What, can I really say what it sounds like? Yeah. It sounds kind of like, kind of homoerotic. What? Well, what do you? What does it mean then? I hit him in the face with copper pipe. Oh, okay, okay, because it just sounded. I don't know what you're thinking of. Well, I misunder, I mistook what you, you were. You must be some kind of panty wearer. I'm definitely not a. Hey, how old are you? Like fifteen? No, I'm a little older than that. You even got grass down there? <laughs> yeah, yes, I do. Uh, you're a dipstick. Now, what makes you think that? That young people today can relate to advice from the 50s. Because it's timeless, you know? It's like it's back when things were simpler. You know, when you could, you could settle things with the, just the, the toss of a chain. So that's... But I mean, like, back then, you didn't have... Um, like, I know drugs would be an issue now that people would have to deal with. No, like, we never messed with drugs. You know what we used to do, though? What's that? We used to drink vodka like it was nobody's business. Okay. We also had a house made of beer bottles. You you had a house it made was, of beer bottles? literally, 
We could fit the entire group of all our broads in it. Uh huh. All the deacons and our broads. So, so you actually drugs were not an issue, but I guess maybe drinking was. Well, you know, it, it helps to get loose. Like, how loose would would you get back then on an average night? Start off, you know. Well, first of all, you know, we crank up this old photograph that we stole. Crank up some Olympic sides. Get loose. Drink half a bottle of vodka each. Drink some of that stolen beer. <laughs> Schmitz. Half a bottle. Yeah. Each. Yeah. Go out, harass Officer Harrops. Who? What? Now, who is Officer yeah. Harrops? Well, do you remember on Happy Days there was that Officer Kirk? Yeah. Who everybody hated? Uh-huh. That's based on this, on this, can I say this word, douchebag, named Officer Harrops from York. Okay. He tried to impound my bike at least 30 times. Mm-hmm. You know what I did to him? What did you do to him? Came up behind him with a ski mask, wrapped that chain around his neck, and I pulled it. That, that is horrible. That's truly horrible. Hey, he, let's, try, he tried to impound my bike. Well, let's take a call right here. Yeah. WFMU, you're on the air. Yeah, I was just wondering if the episodes where uh, Fonzie goes to the rodeo and when he loses his sight and rebuilt his bike, if that was really based on anything the Gorge did. See, that stuff was so late. I mean... The first couple seasons was bad enough. That stuff was just out of the park bad. Yeah, that's what I was... I, I thought the bike might have been real, but I, did, I thought the rodeo thing might have been a little outlandish. No, I, I, I did steal a horse once. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wow. But, you know, one time... This is, this is funny. One time the Deacons and I beat up a baseball game. Uh-huh. A baseball player? A game. A game? What, yeah. what do you mean a game? Well, they had the summer league. It was like a semi-pro ball team uh-huh. called the Fly- the High Flyer or something like that. And they were playing a team from Emmaus. The Deacons and I, we rolled in there on our bikes. Chains flying, pipes oh, thrown everywhere. We beat everybody up, even the players. Well, that's horrible. We creamed those humps. Now, maybe you, it sounds like you got some growing up to do. I mean, you're an old guy. You know, I'm you 63 years down. cool. Wow, I have about eight questions for the Gorge here. Break them up. Okay, um, okay, here it is. Uh, did Ralph Malf live in New York? Was he one of the Gorge's gang? A lot of those characters were based on people in York. Ralph Malf was based on this total loser named Denny. Now, I wanted to ask you a question about um, who... Richie was. You mentioned he was based on somebody. Did you say Rodney? Rodney. And what was he similar to Richie? He he was similar, but I gotta say, the relationship. If you'll notice, their relationship between he and and Fonzie was pretty good. Okay. You know, they would um. They would kind of hang out. Not yeah. me and Rodney. I I I hung out with them once, and this is funny. We had this thing where uh, each I'd get I'd get my the deacons and we'd do this thing where we'd all pick up a car and carry it. So it was all the deacons. There were ten of us, and we got Rodney. He's in front. He's uh-huh. helping carry the car, and he was so excited because he was thinking like, "Wow, I'm hanging out with the deacons," you know. Uh huh. So we're carrying the car. That's sort of the thing. Is you can you see how far you can carry it. And then on the count of three, nobody could hear it but me, but, but me and the deacons. One, two, three. All the deacons drop the car, and it lands on top of Rodney. So he's pinned under the car, and it's called wearing a car. So you, drop, you dropped a car on him. Yeah, he wore a car. <laughs> <laughs> That's horror. That's it's funny. Oh, I, I don't know what to say to that, Gorch. Here's another question. That's uh, part of the learning experience. Here's a question from a guy in uh, Nebraska named Matt. That's God's country out there. Have you ever been out there? No, it seems cool, though. Mm-hmm. Real people. He says, hey, Tom, I'm sort of a loser, and I was wondering if you could ask the Gorch if he has any advice on how I can get some chicks. Yeah, first of all, you never say you're a loser. You gotta put off this what what I call an air of coolness, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, 
I don't know if this guy's in college. Hopefully he's not, because college is for uh, weak babies. But here's what you do. Some, some pointers. Never run. There's nothing less cool than seeing someone run. You mean run from, for, from something? From, just run. You always got to be kind of strutting. The good strut. There's actually a diagram. There's kind of some uh, four pages of like how to do the gorge strut in the book. The gorge strut. Yeah. <laughs> I but can't... you never run, okay? Yeah, I can't wait to see the gorge strut diagram. Here's what you do. Here's what he needs to do. Okay. Like I said before, don't ask nobody never for help. You go buy new, new undershirts, take a mm-hmm. couple laps on your bike. Put on a Bill Haley side. If that don't work, you try the penguins. Okay. Drink a malt. Make out with some chick. That's what you do. If you're having a problem with chicks, you just go up to some chick somewhere and you just go, you and me, now. That's harassment. They love it. They lo- Well, I'm sure they the don't. The ladies here love it. They go, oh, gosh, yeah. Well, <laughs> this is not York. They go, Gorch, give me that tongue. WFMU, you're on the air. Hi, yeah, I was wondering what the Gorge shaves with. Straight razor. Oh, uh, straight razor. Do you and if, I can't, if, I, if it's too dull, you know what I use? What? A chain. You've used a chain yeah. to shave. Yeah. Um. So, like, this get, one thing I wanted to ask you was when, when Happy Days was going strong, yeah. did people know that you were the character? That it was uh, based on? It, it was kind of bad because they, they'd see Fonzie doing, doing all that weak stuff. And they'd say, hey, Gorch, you didn't really do that, did you? You didn't really go save some puppies, did you? And I'd say, no, man, I whipped some chains around. What was the last time you spoke to, uh, to Gary Marshall? That, that day he kicked me off the set. I can't remember what the episode was, but Fonzie was doing something really queer. And I was like, man, you can't do this. You gotta show you gotta show Fonzie. We put a chain around. Okay, yeah. Well that you know, I, I in his defense I can see how that might not have been the most appropriate thing for television. Well, you know, it's it's like episode it's episode three when uh Potsy took Richie to this wild party. It's like a bachelor party. Uh huh. That's kind of based on reality. I took uh, Rodney's kid brother to this party. I got him so drunk he had to go to the hospital. Uh, again, that that's that's really really socially irresponsible and very creepy. His name was Dwayne. Mm-hmm. One other thing I wanted to ask you was: you said you had a re- somewhat of a recording career going. You had a record. Yeah. What was a chain fight? Yeah. Chain fight tonight. Yeah. Have you done, uh, is, I mean, is there anything else that, that you've done musically As a matter over of the fact, last yes, 50 I got years? A new, a new uh, CD coming out. Uh huh, what's that? The Gorsh Rocks and Rolls. And w- what is that? That's a new. It's like new stuff, but it's, you know, of course it's in the vein of the classic rock. I got some of the offspring of uh, the Olympics backing me up. Okay. It's great. Want to hear some song titles? Sure. Souped Up Motorbike. I got the first singles this. Really good song called Beat Up the World. Got a song about this girl that I'm dating. It's called Bawling Mary. There's a, a really good rock and roll song called Chain Fight 2001. Okay. A song called Elk Races. Elk Races? Yeah. What, what is an elk race? Well, you know on the show when they, had, they would go to see the submarine races? Yeah. And that was like slang for going to some place you'd make out. On the show, it was called Inspiration Point. Yeah. Well, in reality, in York, it was Inspiration Pond. So it was a pond. Yeah. And when you'd go, you'd, you'd say, yeah, I'm going to the elk races. Okay. You know what that meant? What's that? That meant you were going to get your wick dipped. All right. Hey, let's take another call. FMU, you're on the air. Hi, yeah. The Gore sounds kind of hostile. I was wondering if he has any friends. I got, I got a few friends. But it's hard when you're this cool. People are kind of scared of you. Do you beat them up? Sometimes. With your chain? Or a pipe. Nice. You want to get beat up? 
It's Not funny you glory. say that because the last song on my new record is called You Equals Beat Up. Oh, my God. Yeah. Right. So when does this record come out? It's going to come out in February. All right. Well, I'll look forward to it. I'll pick that up. It's and... also a song called Do It in 50 Style. Okay. FMU, you're on. Hey, okay. you know what? What's that? I met Dick Clark in 59. Uh-huh. I went over to, to Philly. They were doing bandstand. Okay. I come up to him and I go, yo, Mr. Clark. He got really scared. I thought I was trying to rob him. And, and what happened? Were you trying to get on the program? Well, yeah. I said, I got this single I wanted, I wanted you to put on your show. You're going to put it on your show tonight. And I was ripping this chain around. Uh-huh. Next thing I know, these security goons got me face down the pavement. Wow. Spent the night in the jail in Philly. Hey, Gorch. Yeah. Uh, I'm afraid I'm going to have to call this uh, segment to an end, all right? You buy that book. I'm going to buy the book. The book is called... All you sit faces out there better buy that book. And the book is called The Real Life Fonzie's Guide to Real Life. Well, thanks for calling, Mr. Gorchnik. Wow, that was kind of interesting. Um, why don't we get back to the music? Here is something by Party of Helicopters on WFMU.